Blessed Jesus, come to me, soothe my soul with rays of peace. As I look to you alone, fill me with your love. Mountains high or valleys low, you will never let me go. By your fountain let me drink, fill my thirsty soul. Glorious, marvelous, grace that rescued me. Holy, worthy is the Lamb who died for me. Blessed Jesus, come to me. As I fall down at your feet, let me touch your nail-scarred hands, Jesus, I would see. Glorious, marvelous, grace that rescued me, holy, worthy is the Lamb who died for me. that rescued me, holy, worthy is the Lamb who died for me. Welcome to Twickenham. Thanks for coming out to be with us this morning. If you're a guest, we are really excited to have you with us. There is a card on the seat in front of you that has a little QR code, and you can uh, scan that. It'll take you to our website. You can learn a lot more about us. Just really, really glad you're here. If, if you did not grow up in the Church of Christ but come from another background, we, we're going to seem a little weird, okay? Because, A, we don't have a band, we don't think there's anything wrong with having a band. We just, somebody in, in Christendom needs to keep the tradition of a cappella music alive, and we're probably the best candidates for that. So that's what we do. So you're in the band, okay? So first off. Second, um, we, do, we do communion every Sunday, and some churches do it quarterly. And other, uh, okay, and so you remember the Da Vinci painting of the Last Supper? Jesus instituted communion or the Lord's Supper. Some churches call it the Eucharist. We do that every week. Take a little piece of bread and a, a little cup of grape juice, and we remember the body and the blood of Jesus. Um, and that's our way of saying we can't earn a relationship with God. We can't be good enough. We can't give enough money. We can't avoid enough sin. It's, our, it's just our way of confessing if it weren't for what Jesus did on the cross, we'd be doomed. And so you are welcome to participate with us in that, whether you're a member here or not. We like to say it's his table, not ours. Uh, you'll know that's coming uh, when two of our teenagers come up, Adam Krieger and Olivia Rawlings are going to read the scriptures and lead the prayers for us before communion. So that's, that's that. My name is Jody. I'm the preacher here, but I'm not preaching today. We have a guest speaker that my colleague Steve Krieger will tell you about later on in this service. This is Lincoln Smith. He's our worship leader and executive minister. I've known him a very long time. First time I, I met Lincoln, he was actually the lead singer in a cover band for Led Zeppelin. So, <laughs> so. And some of what I just told you is true, okay? <laughs> Let me say a prayer over us. Let's stand and we'll get started. I'm really, really glad you're here. Holy Father, thank you so much for this glorious weather, this beautiful day. And thank you for the people in this room and those watching online, whether we are having the, the most awesome moment in our lives or whether we're barely getting by, God, we know that you see us and that you love us and that your son Jesus lived, died, and rose again for us. God, thank you, and we praise you this morning, and we lift up the name of Jesus. In his name we pray, and the whole church said, amen. amen. 
I guess we should rock out this morning. Is that? <laughs> Jesus, what, what a beautiful, beautiful name. Beautiful name. Son of God, Son of Man, Lamb that was slain. Joy and peace, strength and hope, grace that blows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Rescue my soul, my stronghold, lifts me from shame. Forgiveness, security, power and strength, grace that blows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Joy and peace, strength and hope, grace that blows all fear away. What a beautiful name. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even averted their gaze from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word, but chose to be silent, though you did no wrong, nor was deceitfulness found in you. Yet by your words our salvation has come, yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name, has enthroned you on high, Jesus, the name above all names. God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high, Jesus, the name above all names. You were despised. You were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even averted their gaze from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word, but chose to be silent, though you did no wrong, nor was deceitfulness found in you. Yet by your wounds our salvation has come, yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name, he has enthroned you on high, Jesus the name above all names. God has highly Exalted your name, he has enthroned you on high, Jesus, the name above all names. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even averted their gaze from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Today I'll be reading from Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. 
We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of all of us, of us all. Let's pray for the bread. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. As we take this bread, help us to remember his body that was broken for us and because of us. Help us to never forget the sacrifice that he made so our sins could be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light. Full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Today I will be reading from Isaiah 53, 7 through 12. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal, he was put in a rich man's grave, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he was exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Dear God, thank you for the, allowing everyone to be here and worship you. We are so blessed to be here today to take this cup in honor of you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed, the sin of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid, silent as 
as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Sent of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Now my debt is paid is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, is free. But stand in Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Yes, now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Here's the good news. See, the stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen from the grave. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Yes, now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor unto Thee. Praise and honor unto Thee. Amen. Be seated. June of this year, Sherry and I were listening intently at the Huntsville City Schools Board. They were scheduled to announce the selection for the new superintendent of Huntsville City Schools. It was also rumored that they would be announcing some new principals for several schools. We were intently interested in both of these items because our son Adam was entering ninth grade and we wanted to know who those people were. We had our favorite for superintendent out of the three candidates. We had no idea who the Grissom principal would be or who the candidates even were. Sherry had worked with Dr. Sutton and his wife, Jamaica, for several years and spoke very highly of them. When the moment came for the announcement, it was Dr. Sutton, there was great rejoicing in the Kruger House. When David Coker was later announced as principal at Grissom, we were two for two, and you would have thought we had won the lottery. Dr. Sutton, I know you don't want me to read what all you've done because it's not about you, but 
I want them to know who you are as you come up here to speak. Dr. Sutton has nearly 30 years of experience as a teacher, principal, and central office administrator. At Huntsville City Schools, he has served as the district's chief of staff, the deputy superintendent of learning supports, the chief academic officer, and the interim superintendent before being selected as the superintendent. Prior to Huntsville City Schools, he was the longtime principal at Central High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. While at Central High, the school significantly increased graduation rates, increased yearly scholarships for students, and established a career path program, which is now used as a model across the state. Dr. Sutton is a proud graduate of Stillman College and then received his doctorate in education, leadership, law, and policy from Alabama State University. He was awarded the 2018 UCEA Excellence in Education Leadership Award. He also served as the lead pastor at the Christian Community Church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which was founded by his father in the late 1970s. The church serves Tuscaloosa County by hosting over 25 active ministries, a learning center, and a food pantry. He and his wife, Tamika, have six children and two grandchildren. I've met Dr. Sutton on several occasions, and I can tell you two things that I know for sure. He loves the Lord, and he loves kids, especially the kids in the Huntsville City School System. We're very fortunate to have you with us here this morning. I know that you will be blessed by what he has to say. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Clarence Sutton. Good morning, everyone. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be with you today. And I'll try to hold down some of my excitement because I'm very energetic, especially when I get to talk about the Lord and the Huntsville City Schools at the same time. <laughs> First, I want to thank the ministry here. I met uh, Minister Vickery and Ms. Craig and the youth minister. They, they were the first people to reach out to me when I took on this assignment. And then they followed up and we met. And to hear what you're doing for our community and for the Lord is amazing. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of, to be here in Huntsville. Before I start, I won't use all my time, but I do know I have some Huntsville City School family in here. So if you're a student or a teacher or a leader from Huntsville City Schools, if you would just stand so I can see you and recognize you, because they do all the work. They do all the achievement. Yes, 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 yes. So thank you. We're going to do some amazing things. We are and going to do some amazing things for the Huntsville City Schools. I do have my adopted family here. The Strongs adopted me, my wife and I, and so they feed us every once in a while. So you can tell I do not turn down a meal. Uh, so the Strong family decided to skip their church and come and hang with me today. So you all just kind of wave to the people. I'm glad to have you here. And of course, I could not do what I do if I didn't have a tolerant patient, loving, bossy wife. <laughs> and so my wife is here, just kind of wait till the, then I'll get started. Thank you. I, 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 I want to use this opportunity to share my heart with you so you get to know me and I get to know you because we have to do this thing together. I believe in disruptive partnerships, meaning we have to partner together to do things, do things differently like our Lord did to really um, conquer our assignment. And so I'm going to do this, and I hope since I'm in a church, I can use the scriptures to kind of describe what, who I am and my vision for the Huntsville City Schools, because I do represent 23,000 plus students and almost 3,000 employees. We are one of the top districts in the state, even though some people don't know that. It's my job to remind them of that. I want to come from Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. And if you don't mind, I'll give you the title of my sermon in the middle of my sermon. You'll, you'll kind of see I'm different. Matthew 14, 13 to, through, Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21 says, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and did something about it. He healed the sick. 
As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. He said, bring them to me, Jesus said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the bread. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They ate all and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate were about 5,000 men beside women and children. This is the scripture I use for my leadership and my servitude. A lot of people forget that Jesus is the ultimate educator. He is an outstanding teacher because not only he used the word to teach, the law, he demonstrated, he was a hands-on teacher. And he used situations to educate. And he challenged, every good lesson starts with a challenge. So here we are with our Lord and Savior going through a, through a difficult time. He's just getting his disciples organized, and John the Baptist has just been beheaded. He's getting himself together, yet he's teaching, and people hear all about it because teaching must have passion. My first job at the Huntsville City School is to bring passion back into the schools. Therefore, you will see me energetic. Now, I'm not going to run around today because I got bad knees, and I had throat surgery, so I won't sing because then you might walk out on me. But I do believe you have to have energy and passion to your assignment. So they heard of his passion and now they'll follow him where he is. He's trying to get away and they'll follow him. They're leaving their towns to hear this great teaching. And he teaches them. He educates them. And now it's getting late in the evening. They're outside. And here comes me, his disciples. And say, all right, we've done enough. It's time. There's a need. Send them home so they can get their own food. And that's where we are in 2023. There's a great need. There's a lack of resources. And to be honest in here, some of us are really tired. You heard in my bio, I've been an educator for 30 years to the point I don't even gray anymore. I just go bald. <laughs> I tried to use Rogaine. It just did not work because that's a weariness that's attached to serving. So they're out there and the disciples say, we, we, we've done a good job. There's a lot of people here in the word, but it's closing time. Let's send them home because we've done enough. And here, Jesus looked at his pertraduitous disciples and said, I need to teach you the real definition of service. He says, don't send them away. You feed them. And that's why I am with leadership. I said, because we want to look at the Lord and say, what are you talking about? Am I the only one who looks at the Lord sometimes and what are you doing? You see the need. You see that's 5,000 men plus women and children here outside in a remote place. You've been walking with us and hanging with us and you know we don't have the resources to meet this need. And to be honest with you, Lord, it's late in the evening. We're tired. What are you talking about doing now? And Jesus is here to teach us, to teach me how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. That was the title of my sermon if you didn't catch it. <laughs> he stretches us so that we can be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. There's a great need we don't have the resources, and I've been doing this for 30 years. 
It is somebody else time to serve. And that's where we are in the body of Christ. That's where we are in, in our nation. And that's where we are in public schools. Everyone knows me. I can stay up here 30 minutes, but they told me I got 15 minutes and 30 seconds. My wife told me that. <laughs> we can talk all day about the need of our country, our nation, our community. And we can talk about the lack of resources. And to be honest, those who've been serving for a long time in the ministry, in, in the neighbor, in the community, nobody wants to run for office. We had to beg people to join the PTA because those who serve are actually tired. And Jesus says, well, I'm not just going to tell you what to do with the assignment. I'm going to give you some strategies to use to meet the need of the people. So this is what I'm doing, and this is what we do in the Hospital City Schools. He says, first, let's get organized. Let's see the need. Because there's a, dif a difference between problems and needs. Because if you only talk about the problems, you hear a lot of complaining, because we all have problems. But he says, let's sit down and look at the needs so we know what we really need to address. So they sit the people down, they got organized, and that's the first thing we, we've done with the Hospital City Schools. We're working with people like Mr. King. Let's sit down and let's look at the need because each school has different needs. For too long, we've used the rental wrap formula of education and just covered every plate with the same aluminum foil, and it did not work because all of us have different needs. And the beauty of our Lord, he knows us so well that he knows what each and every one of us need. And he can provide for each need, but we are different. That's what we have to do in the school. So we sat down with each leader, each principal, explain exactly what you need. Let's look at the data. Let's look at the, at the situation. But here's the key. Let's put a face to the need. Too many times we want to address the needs from the other side of the village and not put a face with the need because if you don't put the face with the need, you cannot lead with compassion. We need to bring compassion back into leadership and put people who really care about people in the right places. Amen. So he says, sit them down, put a face to the need. Lay them on the grass so you can see why you cannot just send them away. We have to do something and not have schools like normal and communities like normal. We have to go. So guess what? Every Wednesday morning, I get in my car. I'm learning hospital. And I go and I knock on doors. I walk in the neighborhoods. I look at the community because we cannot make a decision without looking at the faces of those we're about to affect with this decision. So he says the first thing you have to do is sit them down, see their faces, get organized. Then number two, he says, let's see what resources we really have. The second thing we've done with the Huntsville City Schools, with your help and your ministers, let's see the wonderful resources that we really have. Huntsville and Madison County and said, amazing! Look at all the resources. We have a church full of people, resources. Why, as a school district, we haven't reached to you and you reached to me and say, what can we do for each other? We have less than 3% unemployment rate. We have all these businesses in the community. So let's go and take the schools and let's see what we really have. Now, for those who love to complain and see problems, of course, they're going to say it's not enough. But when you put the resources, and the third thing he says, you get the resources, gather them together. This might be only five loaves and two fish, but you know what? I've eaten good off some two-piece snacks, some Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> he says, and here's the part that we missed. He says, take your resources and bring them to me. He says, take what you have and bring them to me. And I know, I know, I'm almost finished, but I know that's separation between church and state. 
I know people complain that when they name me superintendent, well, you know, he's a minister and, oh, Lord, look what we're doing here. I understand that. But, 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 but. It may be a separation between church and state, but there's no separation between me and my Lord. So I took everything I have, my knowledge base and the need, and I gave it to him. I started praying, Lord, what do you want me to do with these resources? And he says, I'm going to show you what to do next. And this is my campaign. This is why I'm here. He said he took it and he gave thanks. Too many times as public educa educators, we allow those out there tell us what we were doing in here. And we never fought back. We are the Huntsville City Schools. We have 23,000 students. We are pre-K in every elementary school that our community and we pay for, not the state pay for. We've done that. Before the state said do universal pre-K, we started at Huntsville City Schools. People don't hear that enough. Every year, every year, we have National Merit Scholars in the Huntsville City Schools. Every year, we have career technical education where our students not only get a diploma, they get paperwork to follow the diploma. We lead the state in scholarship offerings. I give thanks for that. We are a solid B school district. And you know, I want to be an A, but you know, a B not bad. And see, students, when you go home and your parents stop fussing, sometimes you need to use that. Hey, I know, but a B ain't bad. But no, with that B, though, you got to understand that we are the largest urban school district in Alabama. There, there is no urban school districts that large scoring like we score. Now, you might have some suburban districts, and we're going to catch them in the next two years. But we are the largest in Alabama. Um, Superintendent Mackey called me and said, you are the key to what we're doing because you, you are the highest performing urban district we have in Alabama. People don't hear that enough. And what we have to do, even in the body of Christ, in the church, we have to never let the community stop us from giving thanks for what the Lord has done. We, I give thanks that we're about to build a new career technical center under budget in this market. Thank you, Lord. I get thanks that we have over three months in reserve in this economy. That comes from great leadership. We have wonderful students. We have wonderful teachers. And first thing, God, he said, when you get everybody to the table, never forget to give thanks. And then he broke it. He says, now you take this and you share it with the people. And that's why I'm here today. I've, I've been trying to, people are trying to get me to speak, and I'm like, no, I get, to, I get to work. But I'm here because it won't work unless we break it, unless we share it. Because Clarence Sun can only do so much. Your church can only do so much. But what if we all get to the table and serve everybody at the same time? Imagine what we can do for our community. Imagine what we can do with our city. Imagine what we can do with the city schools. We're six points from that A. Those six points may be in this room. But it's going to take you being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. It's going to take me to get out of my comfort zone and, and reach out to your ministers, reach out to every church. My assignment to get every school associated with at least one or more churches. They're going to get associated with at least one or more business leader, community leader, and one or more church. Church, because we need church involved in this move, what God is calling us to do. So disciples go, and they take this, that I don't know how it worked. I don't know how he did it. I'm just thankful he did it. They took, they took the two fish and the five loaves, and they fed everybody. What if, and I'm crazy, I'm a dreamer, don't hold it against me, but I believe with the power of the Lord, we can meet every need in this city. I'm a dreamer like that. 
I believe in the power of the Lord because I believe my Bible says with God, all things are possible. So I believe we can be an eight district in less than two years. And can, you know, can I throw something out there and you just pray for me? I believe in the next five years, we're going to reach unitary status where we don't need the DOJ tell us what we need to do. Amen. And I'm working toward that because work without faith is dead. So even though I'm a disciple, I'm out there and I got my five loaves and, and I'm serving, for some reason, the bread never runs out. For some reason, the fish never runs out because we are now working in an uncomfortable situation for a Lord who's comfortable in all things. How do I know? Because he is the ultimate teacher. And if I was in another church, I would say, I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> Jesus himself is the model of being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. One time he was teaching, and he was teaching so strong, the people got upset with him, and they said they were going to pick up stones to, to kill him. And Jesus hid and just slid out the city. He didn't panic. He didn't sweat. He didn't even fight back. They said he just moved on out the way because he's comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Another text, one of my favorites, there was a storm and they was on a boat and, and those fishermen even panicked. How can you be an expert in something that you've seen before? And they start panicking and they go to the Savior and he's at the bottom of the boat and he's asleep. And they wonder, Lord, how can you be comfortable in this uncomfortable situation? Even there was a time when they had an old rugged cross waiting on him, that he knew this is my assignment, that the assignment is going to have some nails attached to it. It was going to have a crown of thorns attached to it. Yet he was obedient to the cross. Am I the only one thankful that God was the model of being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation? Because he took my sins and yours onto a cross. And the Bible says he died on the cross for us, for the redemption of our sin. And on the third day, he got up again. And because our Savior can be uncomfortable, can be comfortable in this uncomfortable situation, I can be comfortable being a superintendent for the Huntsville City Schools. I know the needs. I know we have more mental health issues in our country than ever before. I know we have war lurking around the corner like, never, like always dealing with countries and dealing with their, I know the crime rate in, our, in, our, in America is increasing. I hear the problems. I know people say our test scores are lower, but it's, which is not true. Our ACT scores now are higher than the state average and the national average. But I hear the problems, but I don't, I don't do my leadership by problems. I do my leadership by needs. And I hear it all the time. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why God put me at the superintendent for Huntsville City Schools. I'm a shy person. I like doing the technical stuff in my church. I'm a bad video man. <laughs> and I ask God, why would you put me on a stage and put me a pastor of a church and put me as a principal of a school? I don't tell you, I don't mean to brag, but you know, I've been on ESPN 30 for 30. And they are the worldwide leader in sports. <laughs> they followed me from I opened my door till I got home at night. And they only had like a 30-second clip. <laughs> but God wants to stretch us. He wants to stretch you. And everybody in this room, you have a divine purpose to fulfill. You have an assignment. And the assignment is going to make you ask the Lord, like I'm asking the Lord, what are you doing? You see the need. It's 23,000 plus students. You see the need. We have the lowest minutes uh, uh, participation for, for our wealth area. You see the need. The money sometimes runs funny, what we want to do. And Lord, you know my limitations. You've been, you've been hanging with me for a long time now, Lord. You know I can't get up in front of these people. You know I can't, what I'm going to do for the, the Blossom Woods and the, and the Lake Woods, and I got to remember all these 20, 43 schools. 
You know that nobody wants to work after COVID. Lord, what you want me to do with this? And he says, don't send them away. You feed them. And as I get ready to go to my seat, my question to you, this beautiful church in this beautiful building who has a challenge to throw a big word in the middle of your sermon. <laughs> this is a beautiful time to take on your assignment. But what if you the one person that's keeping us from feeding the multitude? What if you the one person that's not meeting your assignment because you're tired or you're frustrated that's keeping us from being that A district that we seek? What if you're the one person that God has assigned to make me a better person and I can't because you're uncomfortable contacting me? I am thankful that you have a ministry who reached out to me, who said, we, we have your back. What do you need from us? And this is what we're already doing. This is what we, we said we would do. And I trust you enough that you trust God enough that you're going to accomplish everything, that we're going to meet every need that has been assigned to us. Thank you all for having me. I'm thankful to be here. I made it within my 15 minutes and 31 seconds. So maybe my wife will cook for me when I get home. You know, I, I'll stop there. <laughs> But no, I, I, am, I am thoroughly proud to be the superintendent for the Huntsville City Schools. I am thoroughly pleased that I'm here with the invitation. I challenge you, I don't care what age, I don't care your background or what you've done already, I urge you to be uncomfortable. Let the Lord stretch you so we all can complete our assignment. God bless you. Can I pray or you want me to pray? I can go ahead and pray. Y'all mind if I pray before I go? I'm a praying man. Amen. Because I believe in the power of prayer. Amen? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you today, number one, with thanksgiving. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for our families, our friends. We thank you for our situations, our job, but we thank you most for Jesus Christ, who through him we have the redemption from sin. We ask now that you bless us, touch us, give us the strength, the peace, and the wisdom to complete the assignment you have placed over our lives. And I pray that everyone in this room understand their purpose in you. And if they have questions, they seek out to you because the Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask God. And then they have the boldness to walk through to every door that you open for them. I pray a special prayer on all schools, especially the Huntsville City Schools, those who work and those who attend, that you have greatness attached to our lives, that, we, that it will be revealed and manifested at a rapid pace. And I give you thanks for this church, everyone, anybody in this room, and God, let us be who we are called to be. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. I hope to see you, you soon. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. So I got, uh, my phone been blowing up, and I got texts from three members and eight of our nine elders, and they want to know, what are you doing next Sunday at 10 o'clock? <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. This week, when you hear news or you read something on the various news sources that you consult, and they tell you the bad news about what's going on with kids in schools or with schools or the things that just send you up a wall about what's going on in education in the United States. I want you to, I want you to remember that on Sunday, the superintendent of the Huntsville City Schools stood up in our church and talked about Jesus. And he used Jesus as a model for how to lead 
a community and a school. I want you to remember that because that's important. What happened here this morning is significant. So Dr. Sutton, Brother Sutton, thank you so much. And Jamaica, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I would not have made you stand. So anyway, hey, if you're a guest this morning uh, or a member that, that needs prayer, some of our elders uh, are going to be down in room S201, just down this hallway, first room on the left, past the elevator, and they, will, they and their wives will pray with you. And you do not have to leave here today with a question or a burden that you have not shared. So we would invite you to do that. Got a couple of announcements that I need to share with you, and then we'll, we'll wrap things up. Uh, first of all, coming up next Sunday night, we have an opportunity to serve our community. Every year we do trunk and treat in our parking lot. We pull, it, pull in our cars. We open up our trunks. Our trunks or the backs of our trucks are decorated elaborately, never with things that are scary or gross or mean, but things that are whimsical and fun and things that wouldn't frighten children, right? <laughs> and then we hand out candy. So we'll start serving chili at 6 o'clock, and then we'll start handing out candy at 7. It's going to be in the, this parking lot right over here, and I hope you'll come and be a part of that. And if you can't be a part of that, then you need to drop off some candy at the church building sometime this week, okay? Like some candy, big ones. <laughs> November 3rd, we are going to do our annual day of prayer, and there are a lot of things to be praying about. There are some cards in all the lobbies, or you can go to our website uh, or, or uh, contact our office with a prayer request. You can write your prayer requests down, and for 12 hours, people will be in this room praying over those needs. So please share those prayer requests with us. You can drop them, uh, when you write the, the prayer request down, you can drop them in some of the contribution boxes. Or you could also drop a check if you wanted to, I'm just saying, that's another thing you could do. Uh, and then uh, the last thing coming up real soon, and we'll give you some more information about this, but I want you to be thinking about it and praying about it, is our annual food for the city. We'll be doing a food collection that we'll be uh, letting you know more about. We'll send out a list later. Hey. So glad you were here. Let's stand. We're going to sing one more song, and then we'll be dismissed. Who has the power to raise the dead? Who can save us from our sin? He is our hope, our righteousness. Jesus, only Jesus. Who can make the blind to see? Who holds the keys that set us free? He paid it all to bring us peace. Jesus, only Jesus. Holy King, Almighty Lord, saints and angels all adore and joy. Jesus, only Jesus, who can command the highest praise, who has the name above all names, you stand alone, I stand amazed, Jesus, only Jesus, holy King Almighty. Saints and angels all adore, I join with them and bow before Jesus, only Jesus. Holy King Almighty Lord, saints and angels all adore, I join with them and bow before Jesus. Only Jesus, Holy King Almighty Lord, saints and the angels all adore and join with them and bow before Jesus, only Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus, Jesus. Only Jesus.
Again, thanks so much for being here. May the amazing grace of Jesus bless you and give you peace. Have a great week.